Hi there, Kirk McDowell with ContributionSelling.com. Hello, hope you're doing great. Uh, the question I'm here to answer today is, uh, um, why sales training? Why sales training? Okay, great. So, um, <clears throat> this could get asked from a couple of different trajectories, right? It could be a new salesperson wondering like, why sales training? It could be like an intermediate or veteran salesperson asking the question like, why sales training? So. Let me go back up. So for the for the beginner, right, um, is training really going to make a difference? Is it going to help you be more effective? Is it going to be more fun? Am I going to, you know, be able to make a living if I have good training? So that might be the question from a beginner: How much does it cost? Is it difficult? How much time does it take? If you're a veteran, uh, you've been so veteran is someone who actually makes a living selling. Let, let's 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 call it that. <laughs> so if you're a veteran, uh, then. Uh, you might have the experience that, that you know what you need to know and you're kicking it and everything's good and you know uh, why would I need sales training right or you could be a manager or an owner of a business wondering about sales training like um, is it worth it how does it work how much time does it take how much would I need to be involved do I need do I need to deliver it you know you know what does it look like does someone need to come in on purpose is it online is it a course is there coaching included etc cetera, etc cetera. Right, so there's at least three trajectories uh, for that question, uh, which is again, um, why sales training? Okay, good. So let's just start at the beginning. So as a beginner, right, I was a beginner in 1986, I believe. Um, uh, I was in my uh, young 20s and had no business background. I was in the copier business in New Orleans in the 80s. Uh, so no business background. I was raised literally by hippies, damn near raised by wolves, you know. I was raised by hippies, uh, no um, introduction to the world of business or money or finance or professionalism or how to dress, articulate, shake hands, any body language, none of that stuff did I have any appreciation for in the business world. <laughs> in the world that I was in, I had it dialed in, but the world that, this was a new world for me, the world of business, right? And so naturally I chose the most difficult thing I could possibly choose, which is selling copiers in a recession. So of course I'm gonna do that. So, uh, so sales training for me in that context was um, 100% necessary. Do you get it? I mean like one, I didn't even know if I was supposed to shake hands or not shake hands. I got the whole dress code completely wrong and it took me a while to figure that out. And uh, I'm sure I just looked really interesting to people who were more experienced than I was and look at me and just go, oh my gosh. <laughs> so sales training was critical, right? So back in those days, remember this is 1986, 87, 88, uh, I, uh, what was, uh, what was, uh, how sales training was done, uh, if you were not in a corporate environment was uh, either going to workshops and going to like uh, workshops and seminars and that kind of stuff or uh, cassette albums. So uh, some of you, you know, cassette is a, <laughs> I don't know how much to explain, but it's a little thing about this big that has tape in it. And that's how we used to listen to music back in the day or trading, right? So I used to listen to Tom Hopkins, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, Dennis Waitley, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, Roger Dawson. These are all trainers from like the 60s to the 80s kind of thing. Um, and, uh, I was really committed somehow I got it into my brain that developing myself was really important, right? I just felt really blessed. I think I got that from my mother who was big on education, but I felt really blessed that somehow I missed a bunch of things, but one thing I didn't miss was developing myself was worthwhile, right? It would pay off eventually, if not immediately, right? So I trained and how I did that is I drove my little, uh, <laughs> This was 86. At that time, I had a very old Honda Prelude, so it was probably like 70-something. I had this old beat-up Honda two-seater Prelude driving around with the sunroof. I actually thought it was pretty cool. Uh, stick shift, no air conditioning, just to add to the fun of the circumstances. And, uh, you know, I had my little tape players in there, my tape player, my cassette tape player in there. And I would listen to cassette. Whenever I was in the car, the cassette was on. It did not. Now I'm a musician and an artist and a sensitive person. I love listening to music, but I made the, I made the sacrifice. I gave way to rigor and discipline to train myself. Like, you know, so, you know, hours and hours and hours every week for years, uh, what that cassette was going all the time. Start the car, Brian Tracy, Tom Hopkins, Zig Ziglar, whatever, right? 
and uh, critical, 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 critical for me, okay? I would not have made it. I would have not had any place to stand, nowhere to think from, um, had I not had that sort of foundation of training. And I listened to, I had, you know, 20 or 30 cassette albums, and I must have listened to each one of them 20 or 30 times, um, you know, 12, 15, 16 hours a piece. But it was just like, all, you know, I was in my car a lot, tape player was always on, turn on the car, training, right? So uh, sales training for me was critical. I also uh, connected with someone who was more experienced than me, who was successful already, and I made a deal with him that I would do all of his grunt work, prospecting, phone calls, all that kind of stuff. He gets to do the glamorous stuff, closing and whatnot, and uh, we'll split it 60-40 in his favor, and uh, he trained me. So for a couple of years, I had this wonderful mentor. We worked together day in and day out, and I really learned from him. So for me, it was a combination of the training and the mentorship, working with somebody who had already kind of been there, who had skins on the wall and knew what to do and what not to do and could kind of straighten me out like, hey, Kirk, stop doing that. Uh, and I surrendered to that, so I learned quickly, right? Um, so, training for the beginner, critical, 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 super duper duper critical. You do not have to wait around to see uh, if your company is going to provide training for you. I recommend you take 100% responsibility for your own training. Uh, no company I ever worked for for the first like 10 years of my sales career lifted a finger to train me, right? Like zero, right? And I'm one of the best trained salespeople I know, but I took it on as 100% my responsibility and got to it, right? I got jiggy with it, if you will. All right, so that's training for the beginner. Now let's look at the let's look at the veteran, right? So if you're a veteran, if let's say for at least one year you have uh, supported yourself in professional selling, whatever that looks like, right? I'm, bestowing upon you veteran. Now, I'm looking at sales from like 30 years plus, you know, from my beginning, right? And so for me, two, three, four, five years still looks a little bit like a beginner to me. So, so I just want to be responsible. I've just taken that out. If you've supported yourself and or your family for more than a year, you're a veteran, right? So you know some stuff. You've been through some trials. You've been through some tribulations. You've gone through the darkness. You've come out the other side, at least to some extent. Now, for you, here's a special message to you, the veteran, right? I promise you. So first of all, I acknowledge you've done the, the almost impossible, right? It is really something to make a living in sales, especially I did most of my career uh, straight commission or like teeny tiny salary. I think in the copier business, I had $150 a month salary, so like nothing, right? And then the rest of it was commission. So especially if you're in the commission camp and you made a living and made it through and didn't give up and learned the lessons, every failure you learned a lesson, I congratulate you, I acknowledge you, I see you, I appreciate you, great job. And <laughs> the world is bigger than you could possibly imagine. So when I was four or five years in and starting to get my game on and get my feet on, I had a little bit of a reputation. Other copier reps did not enjoy seeing me walk into the office. You know, like I was kind of a, I was kind of a known, you know, killer um, in the copier rep industry uh, community, which sounds weird, but nonetheless. Um, um, The world is bigger than you could possibly imagine. So again, when I was at that phase, I felt like I really knew something and I was accomplishing a lot and had a great closing rate and all that kind of stuff. However, over the next few years, I have uncovered just an infinite amount more about selling and doing business with people and being the, being the person people want to do business with, right? So if you're a veteran, I acknowledge you've accomplished something, right? And the world is infinitely large it's way bigger than you could possibly imagine even at four five six years you're still very tunnel vision and the world of selling is way bigger than you could possibly imagine so for the veteran yeah sales training absolutely without question okay for the sales manager or the business owner sales training <laughs> the only thing worse than paying a whole bunch of money to get your get your team trained up is to have a team that's not trained right that's all the universe. Like I get it, pain in the butt, expensive, 
you got to listen to someone like me pontificate about selling and, you know, whatever, right? I, I get it. If it doesn't seem super appealing or it seems expensive or troublesome, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And the only thing I can imagine that would be more difficult or more of a pain is having a room full of salespeople who don't know what they're doing and they're discouraged and they're pissed off and they're blaming everybody else and they're not meeting their numbers and your business is going down the drain and they're cranky and you're cranky and they're cranky and you're cranky and nothing's happening and nothing's moving day by day by week, by month, by year. That's more difficult than sales training, okay? So, owner, sales manager, sales training, absolutely. Goodness gracious, absolutely, okay? I'm not gonna pontificate any further. I if you're a business owner, I think you can kind of put it together, right? So Kirk McDowell, Contribution Selling at contributionselling.com. I have free training for you and also an offer to get on the phone with you. I'm not gonna advocate about my business or pontificate about hiring me. I'm actually gonna help you solve a problem you're dealing with. Contributionselling.com, I would love to hear from you. Thank you for your time today. I hope this was valuable. Until we speak, uh, give what you wanna get and be the change you wish to see. Thank you.